This is curly cup gumweed, sometimes called gumweed or rosin weed because of these sticky flowers. These uh, are composite flowers, so it's made up of female flowers and male flowers actually in the same flower head. Like a sunflower, these rays sticking out are actually individual flowers, and then they're called ray flowers. The ones in the middle are called disc flowers. There's really quite a lot of flowers in one flower head, and all of those produce seeds. So this is a prolific seed producer. Most of what's growing here is curly cup gum weed that has already bloomed, but they're not eaten because animals generally don't eat gum weed. And that's one of the reasons it's called a weed is that in a pasture or a corral where the grass is all gone, you tend to see gum weed as a continuous stand of one plant. So although it's not eaten by animals generally, animals do sometimes eat it when they have a viral infection because this plant tends to enhance the immune response against viruses probably has something to do with the selenium chelates that are in here. Selenium is concentrated in this plant about 500 times the soil concentration and that's one of the reasons it's medicinal. Is selenium sometimes runs low in people and in animals when they're under a lot of stress and when it does you become more susceptible to infection. So for that reason this plant is used as a tea, mainly the leaves and it's drunk to prevent infection, but it's also used after you have a viral infection or even a bacterial infection because this plant supplements the selenium levels of your body which allows proteins to be made at a quicker rate and the immune system is basically protein driven so it enhances the uh, immune response. Grindelia is its uh, genus name its uh, whole Latin name is Grindelia squarosa. In the U.S. Pharmacopeia, which is the list of drugs accepted by the United States as official drugs for certain conditions, this was, until 1969, the plant used for pulmonary congestion and uh, lung infections. So that uh, the root was taken out and split in half and dried and tea was made from that that you drank and once it got into your blood the um, effect was to dilate the bronchioles and reduce mucus production so that you could breathe easier with uh, lung inflammations and it was a treatment for infections also because there is an antibacterial and antiviral effect of this plant. So it was very useful for that and was replaced by synthetics in 1969. So it has a long history of uh, a medicinal plant. What it was probably used for most commonly is to treat venomous bites and stings of animals, including insects. So bee stings, wasp stings, ant bites all associated with formic acid that's very irritating and can cause allergic reactions are treatable with the gum that's on these flower heads. So these flower heads are very sticky to the touch and that's what you use. You can actually pull one of these off and that's the Native American treatment for a bee sting or a mosquito bite or any inflammatory um, venom that got into the skin, including rattlesnake bites, were treated by sticking this flower right onto the wound. And it stays there on its own. So you can remove it easily if you need to, but just leaving it on there for a few minutes is, has an anti-inflammatory effect, which is the gum that's on here. Um, plus it has a high level of selenium chelates, which topically stimulate the immune response. So you get a double effect of the uh, flower head and it sticks all on its own. So you could treat mosquito bites that way if you have a reaction to that. It also works on scorpion stings, but usually the scorpion stings, these flowers were mixed with 
um, tobacco and tobacco tends to draw out the venom but also it's a natural um, neutralizing agent for not only scorpion stings but bee stings also. So those were the uh, first aid effects of, of this plant which involves the gum. The leaves were used for a selenium supplement to strengthen the immune response and the roots were used as a decongestant and a bronchial dilator for lung infections.